This is where the story of Silithon Solway Golf Club begins. The North British Railway Company founded Sillith in 1892 as part of the development of the town to support the port. And David Grant of North Berwick at the time was commissioned to develop a golf course. But it's Willie Park Jr. that we thank for the layout that we get to enjoy today. And whilst the railway has ceased to exist, this small town on the Solway Firth is home to 18 wonderful Lynx holes and some of the finest Lynx turf that you'll see in the UK. Sillith enjoys a really strong position within the UK rankings and whilst its remote location makes this a long journey for people, it's a destination that's well worth the travel and the rankings simply don't do the course justice. With a relatively modest distance of just over 6,000 yards, Sillith plays an awful lot longer in part thanks to heavy undulations, rumpled fairways, and a wind that, on a calm day, plays around 20 mile an hour. We got to chat to Alan Oliver, lifelong Sillith resident, ex-assistant professional, and now secretary manager at Sillith and Solway Golf Club, to tell us a little bit more about it. Well, even off, even off the very back tees, the championship tee, it's only 6,600 yards, which by modern standards, purely on yardage, isn't a very long golf course now. But it comes with different challenges. It comes with, there's not a lot of fairway bunkers, really. There's, there's some nice strategically placed ones, but it's not littered with fairway bunkers. It's a course that's kind of tough but fair. If you hit good shots, then you're rewarded. If you hit bad shots, then you're punished. And that's, that's the, really what Lynx golf's about, really. And if you miss the fairway, especially, then the roughs can be quite penal. The fairways are flanked with rough and heather and gorse. So there's some pretty kind of tight, some tight tee shots, some areas where you certainly don't want, don't want to hit it. And that certainly makes you think about it. It's not a course in the wind, you do have to hit driver and, and a lot of holes, you do have to you know, get it up there, but really it, it's more strategic about keeping the ball in play. And because the course is not that long, it makes you, it makes you think of every tee you've got to think. You don't just stand up and pull out a driver and, and, and hit it. You've got to think about where you're going to you know, place the ball to keep it in play. So. One of the club's most famous golfers over the years is someone by the name of Cecilia Leach, who was an all-time great in the women's game at the turn of the century. She's probably the most famous golfer we have, and she was one of the best female golfers of her generation. She was from a family in the town, and um, her father was a doctor. And all of her sisters played golf, but she was the best of them. She won multiple national championships. She won French Opens, Canadian Opens, English Opens. She was a, a fantastic golfer of a generation and um, kind of proud to have her as a, you know, when she was here. And, it, and, and the club certainly tried to tell everyone about that and uh, remember her and certainly something that we're quite proud of. Alistair McKenzie was commissioned by the club in 1914 to develop some new golf holes, improve the routing and look at the green complexes. But not all of those changes were implemented. The club had looked at a few different options actually. I think, the, I think the memory, I could be corrected in this, I think they asked, you know, they looked at maybe James Braid and they stuck up on Alistair McKenzie to, invited him to come and look at the course with a view to making some alterations. And he presented something to the then committee. The advent of the war kicked in, which was really stopped that from happening to its full extent anyway. As the course as it sits now, the Alistair McKenzie additions really are third green was moved from the original position was kind of where the marker post was, just underneath there, that was moved up onto the ridge. The fourth tee was, was moved alongside it and he moved the tenth green to its current position as well. So they're the main areas, but there were a lot of other areas that we charted as to where he would have put holes, which is quite interesting as well. So. More recently, Mackenzie and Ebert Design have worked with the club to establish a long-term plan for the club. And their best example so far is the par 5 fifth, which enjoys stunning views across the Solway Firth, following an extension of the green complex. One thing that you get as you go around Sillith is these huge reveal moments, and sometimes that's when you get onto the next tee of a hole, and it opens up a completely different view of the property. Or when you get over one of its summits to its greens, where you've got a blind approach, and you just see a fantastic punch bowl green. Coming away from Sillith, I had a real strong sense of fondness for the club. This to me felt like golf in its rawest form and whilst the club 
and course still provides a challenge to the golfer that's right for today and today's technology. It felt like playing a course that would have been laid down 125 years ago with, with minimal alterations. It's, there's some absolutely stunning golf holes and it feels extremely traditional and you get a real sense of stepping back in time.